Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Pravin Kumar Bhumisethi. In this video, I will cover what is Snowflake, Snowflake features, and Snowflake project flow. How the real-time project flow will be explained here. Okay. So remember, at the end of this video, we'll get to know what exactly the Snowflake web developer will do. So try to look completely so that we can able to understand what the Snowflake web developer do in real-time projects. So let us start. Okay. First, what is Snowflake? So Snowflake is a fully managed cloud-based data warehouse service. We can say it's a cloud-based data warehouse. It's a cloud data platform. So mainly cloud Snowflake is it as a data storage and data analytics solutions. So it's a SaaS model, so that's but software as a service platform to load, analyze, and report on massive data volume. Simply you can say Snowflake is a cloud-based data warehouse, mainly for loading, analyzing, and reporting huge volumes of data. Simply we can say Snowflake is used as a data storage, data processing, data analytics. So simply if anybody asks what is Snowflake, so Snowflake is used as a data storage. So it can store huge volumes of data. It can able to process huge volumes of data and you can able to analyze huge volumes. Okay, so you can like if you want to handle huge volumes, we'll go for Snowflake data warehouse. So why we'll go for Snowflake? So the reason for it. So if you see, there are so many data warehouse solutions are there. Then why we'll go for Snowflake? So based on the features, we'll go for Snowflake. Let us discuss what are the features available in Snowflake. So performance, when you compare for other data warehouse, Snowflake has better performance. SQL support is there. If you know SQL, we can able to easily understand Snowflake. Scalability, data storage, in the sense like it can handle huge volumes of data. So there is no limit to handle like this much only it will handle. So it can handle infinite data and zero maintenance. Okay, no, we don't need to do anything. Just we need to log in, create account, we need to use that set. And fast analytics, okay and data sharing. So we can able to share data to other clients so that they can able to see the data. So we can easily share the data. And on demand pricing in the sense like what suppose if you pay, if you use Snowflake for one hour, we need to pay for one hour. Okay. So pay as much as you use. And one more important feature is that Snowflake is supporting semi-structured data in the sense like it can support JSON, XML, Parquet, Avro words. So these are the semi-structured data it's supporting by Snowflake. And security is also good. Okay. And one more important feature is that time travel and fail safe. Suppose by the by mistake, we, some, we have done something to our data or something to our tables, then we'll go back to the particular time and we can able to get those things. That's the thing about time travel features and fail safe mechanism. And one more important feature is that cloning. So cloning in the sense like suppose something happened in the production. So I want to replicate the same issue. So if you want to replicate the same issue, we need to get the, all the data. How can we get the, all this data? Simply you can able to use clone keywords so that we can able to get all the data in a single shot. Okay, all whatever the schemas are there, we can able to get this. This is but cloning. So main feature is the time travel and cloning, same structured data. So these are the main things we can able to get. Okay, hope this is clear. So performance improve, SQL support, scalability, infinite storage, no zero maintenance, fast analytics, data sharing to other users, on demand pricing in the sense like Pay, pay as much as you use. So what you what we are using, we need to pay that much only. Semi-structured data can support semi-structured files like JSON, XML, these other files, security, time travel, something happened, we'll go back and get, get back those things. Cloning in the sense like replication of same data for issue recognition, something happened here. So we can able to, to get the same data, same schemas, everything, and we can able to go test this. This is about time travel, cloning, security, these are the features. So that's why we, so many companies are choosing Snowflake. Hope this is clear. And what I said, Snowflake is it? It's launched on any cloud. So see, Snowflake cloud providers. Okay, it is launched on any of the Microsoft Azure, AWS, nothing but Amazon Web Services, GCP, nothing but Google Cloud platform. So Snowflake has been launched on any other like on the three out of these three only. Okay, Microsoft Azure, AWS, Amazon Web, Web Services, Google Cloud Form, GCP. Hope this is clear. Now we'll see actual the topic, Snowflake real-time project architecture, like how the project will be there, like how the data will be there, like you can able to, like this is a data migration project, we'll see. So assume like we're having the data sources. So CSE format, Excel, JSON, TXT. So it can be any file, like it's assume like data is there in files format, okay? So these are the data files. And more thing like RDBMS. So these are nothing but on-premise databases. So it can be Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, say any RDBMS databases. And SAP HANA, Amazon Redshift. These are cloud database. Okay. So assume like data will be there in any format, like the files or RDBMS data or cloud databases. So it can be anything. So our target is what I want to move this data to the Snowflake tables. Okay. See this what I say. 
Snowflake is launched on any of the cloud provider that is AWS, GCP, Azure Cloud. So Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform or Azure Cloud. So Snowflake is launched on any of the cloud platform. So our target is for this is the Snowflake environment. These are the staging tables and core reporting tables available in the Snowflake. Now I want to move this data to the Snowflake environment. So directly we can't able to know load. So our target is what we want to load these files or RDBMS data or cloud database into the state Snowflake environment. Now directly it is not possible. We'll make use of what so middle one thing is there. So this is I'm explaining here Amazon S3 simple storage service. So S3 bucket. This is the S3 bucket. So by using ETL, ETL is nothing but extract, transform, and load. I'm loading this data. So I'm loading this RDBMS data into S3 by using ETL support. And I, I'm loading this cloud database into S3 by using ETL. So ETL is nothing but it's a extract, transform, transform, and load. So separate ETL team will be there. They will take this data and load into our S3 buckets. So directly they can't able to load this data. Directly they can't able to load these tables. They will convert this data into XMLs or JSONs or any other TXT files, and they will convert everything and they will load into S3 bucket. So now data will be stored in files format. Okay, so remember one more time. So tables won't directly load into S3 bucket. So they are converted to any CSV files, XML files, JSON files, and these files are loaded into S3 bucket. So now what happened? Now data is there in S3 bucket. Now our target is to move from this all these data sources into Snowflake, you know, that is cloud environment. So directly content with then that's why I'm using ETL's team support. So this these are converted to S files and to store into S3. This is not about storage. S3 is this is the S3 bucket. So this is the Amazon Web Services. Now what happened? Our target is to load this data into staging tables. In, that is Snowflake tables. Now what happened? If the files are there in the our local machine, then by using put command. So by using put command, we can able to load by using install stage into staging tables. This is one way. And one more way is by using snowpipe command. Okay, so by using snowpipe. So by using snowpipe, we can able to load S this S3 files data into staging tables and core rotating tables. One more thing is what by using external stages. So we are creating one external stages. So by using copy command, we can able to load. So external tables. So this is one more thing. Okay. So if you see here, this is what. So if you see this thing, so this is nothing but these are virtual warehouse. So if you want to perform anything in the Snowflake, we'll make so virtual warehouse. Okay. So these are like uh, virtual machines. We can say it's a virtual machine. So, so our target is to load these data sources, data database data, and cloud database tables into stay into Snowflake tables. So directly we can't able to go. Then we'll make so put command and ETL stream then load into S3 buckets. So by using what copy command, external tables, and Snowflake. So by using four methods only, we can able to load data into Snowflake tables. So one more time, by using put command, copy command, external table, and Snowflake, Snowpipe. By using this only, we can able to load data from the sources into our target table. These are the target tables you can see. Now what happened? So main purpose is what we need to load this data. And here we had no data is there here. Now what we need to do, we need to do processing and we need to do summary reports. So based on that, we need to create one views. So based on views, we need to give you to the what data consumers. Okay, now our target is what data is there. It is transferred that data migrated to our Snowflake tables. Now what we need to do, we need to do some logic, some analysis, and based on that, we will create some views and we will give to what Tableau team, Power BI team, click, click view. So look at. So these are nothing but what. So these are the reporting views. So main target is what. So clients are the business users. So this one will be used by clients are as users. Okay. So what they want to do, they want to know like whether the, my business is at what point. How can we know? Suppose data is there in tables. They can't able to easily understand. Then what will make us of views and what views are created giving to reporting team. They will create dashboards so that what end user like business end user or client can able to understand. So where my business is. So by using they can able to take decision. So main purpose is what? So main purpose of all these things is data migration from here. So this is huge volumes of data. So we can't able to do like this. That's why what we are migrating to Snowflake. So we are doing some calculations here. After doing calculations, what we are doing? So we are creating views and we are giving to reporting. So by re reporting teams, they are doing what they will do. They will create dashboards, user stories, so that stories they can able to. So they so that what client or the end user can able to understand what exactly the business is. So they can able to take the decision. So this is clear. So this is the end of it. So we'll see one more time. So if you see it like, so if you understand this concept, like almost like what we're going to do as a snowflake graph, we can able to so data will be there in CSV. It can be Excel, it can be JSON or TXT. So it data files. So data will be there in our DBMS. Okay, so on-premise, it can be Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server. And one more thing is that SAP HANA. So it's a 
Okay. So it can be the last time giving some data. Okay. SAP and Amazon Redshift. Okay. So these are cloud databases. So data sources in the sense like it can be anything. Data files, RDBMS, cloud databases. Okay. Now what happened? So this is what this is data with there. We here this is this is only huge volumes of data. We can't able to take like we can't able to process this huge volumes. That's what we are moving this data to cloud. So this is what cloud platform. So what I said, Snowflake is launch any other cloud provider like AWS, GCP, Azure Cloud. Okay. So what I said, so this is huge volumes of data. It can't able and that's why we are moving all these data sources into one place. That is not what data warehouse. So we're using what Snowflake. So Snowflake, I said what. Snowflake is launched on any other cloud platform like AWS, GCP, Azure Cloud. So if you see here, this is what this is Snowflake environment. So I want to move this entire data into Snowflake tables. So these are the tables, staging tables or reporting tables, something. Okay. So this data I need to move to in a single place. So for this purpose, what we'll make so S3. So here S3 is nothing but Amazon S3. So for this use case, I'm taking AWS. That is Amazon Web Services. So here S3 is nothing but simple storage service. So it's the S3 bucket. So now what happened? Now data needs to these tables need to move to S3 bucket. So directly you can't able with we need to make use of ETL team. So ETL is that word extract, transport, transform, unload. So what we are doing? So now remember these are in tables. So tables directly we can't able. So we are converting these tables into like formats like CSV, XML, JSON. So based on the client requirement, so we are converting this data into and we are loading into this S3 bucket. So your S3 bucket simply can say it's a folder like a cloud folder so okay same as like our drive c drive d drive like this it will be like in cloud we are having drives so these files move into this s3 bucket now what happened you see now this is for on premise again same functionality for cloud database by using etl teams help so we are loading into s3 bucket now our target is what our target is to load this data into these tables so directly we can't able then we'll make so what concepts internal stage so if you see it you suppose files are there in the local machines then by using put command, we can able to load into staging. Tape. This is one way, and one way is by using Snowflake. So for like continuous volume, like okay, continuous volumes are there. Then continuous, if you want to load continuously, then make use of Snowflake. So this is one more functionality. One more functionality is external stage by using copy command, and one more functionality external table. So so by using these three like four ways like put command, copy command, external table, and Snowflake, we can able to load this source data sources into Snowflake tables. So if you see here, this is what this is virtual warehouse. So these are the virtual basic machine. So if you want to perform anything, then we'll make so virtual warehouses. Okay, these are the virtual warehouses. So now what happened? Data from here. So all the sources we are data, we are moving, migrating this data into our Snowflake tables. Now what happened now? We need now main purpose is what we are having the data. So what I say Snowflake is used for data storage, data processing, and data analytics. Now what happened? Data is has been stored. Now we need to do some processing and we need to provide what some you see, I have created tables. After that, what we need to create some views like summarized views. So that what will you to what data consumers. So data consumers are what Tableau, Power BI, Click View, Looker. So these are the reporting developers. Okay. So what happened? So these are the reporting tools. So now what happened? Table data is there. Suppose if we like suppose client want to see the data directly, they can able to access. So if they can table. Then what based on these tables, I'm creating some reports, uh, summary reporting tables. After summary reporting tables, I'll create views, and this will give into the reporting teams like Tableau, Power Bay, so that what they can have based on the view, they can able to create dashboards, stories, so that what end user or the client or business user, so they can able to understand. So my business is at this point, so I can able to improve by using by modifying this step. So I want to improve my, so I want to improve my revenue. So based on the dashboard, they can able. So main purpose of this Snowflake is what? So huge volumes of data we can't able. That's why we are moving to cloud. So what after moving to cloud, what we need to? So we need to store, we need to process, and we need to analyze. So now what happened? So we are creating views and we are giving to the Power BI team or any reporting team. So they are creating dashboards. So based on dashboard, they can like end user can able to say, okay, this is my at this point. Okay, my business is like this. So I want to improve so that these are the steps I need to map. Okay. So main purpose of this entire thing is what? So we need to analyze things. Huge volumes of data they need to analyze. So how can I analyze? So by using what? By using for like Snowflake developer creating tables, modifying and giving to views to Power BI team or any like report have to develop something so they can able to create the create what create the dashboards and reports so that what end user or business clients they can able to understand okay what my business is what i cost of trying to improve oh this is clear so this is like the real time project okay so huge volumes of data we need to transfer so we need to move here by using these core steps and we need to create like we need to transfer something some logic right and give into power so that they can able to handle like they can able to create the dashboards and the end user can able to access this is the like flow will be. 
hope this is clear okay like from december 28th i am starting a new snowflake sql and snowflake real time training base so if you are interested reach out to this number okay like 30th december so if you are interested to look, like uh, to learn sql and snowflake and able to reach out this number if you like the content subscribe and share the channel thank you for watching